You cannot buy a home with as little as 1% down. You don't need 20% down. You don't even need 3% down. There's this new program by Rocket Mortgage. It's called the One Plus program, where you can get into a home, you know, the home that you've been waiting for with as little as 1% down payment. So the whole program, basically the way it works is you put 1% down and then you would be receiving a 2% grant if you qualify through Rocket Mortgage so that it would become a combined 3% down payment. Well, when I was looking into it, I think they just want to do it for people who are low to moderate income because I think it says you have to make a certain amount of income, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple other things that are pretty, pretty nice about this is um, no mortgage insurance is required, which is amazing because it's it's a couple hundred dollars a month. And mortgage insurance is essentially insurance. It's covering the bank's butt just in case you don't pay if you don't put 20 percent. If you put 20% or, le or under 20%, most banks require mortgage insurance. This is saying, no, you don't need it. Um, you got to have a 620 or better credit score and your income has to be below the 80% average medium income, which means let's just say like we live in the city of Norwalk. And if the average income in the city household income is a hundred thousand, let's just say it's, I'm just throwing a number out there. Then if this loan is for anyone that has an 80% or less, so if the average is a hundred thousand a year, you have to be make what's eighty percent of a hundred thousand? Eighty thousand. So you have to be making eighty thousand or less to qualify for this um, mortgage. So yeah. What they care is they want to be able to not just give this loan or allow people to buy this home, but they want to also provide the financial literacy and education so that people are mm. empowered, that they know what they're getting themselves into. Because I I just like right now we're in a time where like um People are talking about the the recession, the housing crisis, and all that, right? Is it 2008 again? Is it going to be worse? No. Um, it's not the same, but it is. It is. Um, Why do you think it's the same? I think it's the same because I personally know families that they got loans approved that are make up 60% of their income, gross income, not their net. So, yeah, it's not the same 2008, but then it's like, it's just different, but it's like, I don't know. In my opinion, I'm like, how many other families are like that where like half their income is going to a house, gross income, approved, approved with flying stars. Yeah. No questions asked. The only thing with that, like, I've always thought like, I hope because we're millennials and we want to buy a home. But the only thing that is kind of like everything they said, recession, recession, stock market is the is, is going up and up and up and up because unemployment, you know, yeah. your savings could be screwed. Your uh, credit cards could be maxed out. But as long as people are employed, they're going to pay for that house. It's like my mom and dad, th this house that they bought, they were probably like 90% of their income was going to this house. Nah, not 90%. Not 90%. Yeah, mom and dad always said that, that their yeah. income was like pretty much everything was house. So many times they would be like, we have no money left at the end of the month. Yeah, but just I would, to pay I would, this house. I wouldn't say 90%, but... If nah, so, the, the, my thing is, people are gonna. If it's sixty five, they're gonna afford it. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are house poor, but they're gonna afford it. And also, I was reading another stat that eighty percent of people who have houses today are less than five percent interest rate. They're never gonna refinance anytime soon. Whereas right now, they're seven or eight. So to have a housing crash, you need people to be either you know for closing down their house or wanting to sell their house or something, but. People who have a house, they're not going to sell. They're locked in that really low interest rate. Why would they sell if they're going to have to move into a house that's more expensive, higher interest rate? No, I'm not saying it's going to yeah. be the same as 2008. I never said that. But what I'm saying is it's similar because in the sense of the lending practices, it's like banks, did they change their lending practices? No, it's the same. Aren't they gotten better? It. No, no, dude. It's 60% of your mortgage, like that's... That's insane. That's insanity. Like mo uh, the the standard is no more than thirty percent of your gross income should be going to um, into a house, and they're proving over fifty. It's insane. Yes, I know people will pay. It's their house. They're not. The last thing they'll do is they'll sell their they'll sell their organ. They'll sell their cars before they sell the house because mm -hmm. the American dream, right? You sell your house, you, you you lose it all basically. Your house is everything for some people. Um, but I was just saying, like, let's just say it's a married couple and it's 60% of their income. One of them loses their job. They're screwed. It's they physically cannot afford to pay the house. They're not going to pay on the credit card. They'll end up losing it. So in that sense, what I'm saying is like, I think there's great programs like this one, you know, like this one about the 
Um, but I think the biggest thing overall is like only because you can quote unquote afford the payment doesn't mean you should do it. And this applies to everything, cars, houses, everything. Car dealers be approving people, you know, with thousand dollar car payment, only making three thousand a month, two thousand a month. And only because they approve it doesn't mean you should do it. So it's always good to like, hey, let's step back and look. Is this only the bank is approving me? Let's say because I know people that they get approved, let's say for eight hundred thousand dollars. That doesn't mean you should do up to 800. You should look for less than that. You want to be comfortable. You don't want to be so stretched out where you're like, damn, if you don't work the overtime this month, how are we going to pay for the bills? How are we going to, you know, home comes first. Sad reality is most people are. It's just me. I always thought like, oh my God, we're going to go in this crazy recession because of this and that. I, I, I don't know. As long as people are employed, you know, they're going to make they're going to make uh, it work out. People have those crazy, we were making fun of them last year, all those crazy car people. R repos aren't going that up. People are still affording those cars, you know? So as long as the employment stays what it is, people are going to afford these houses. Yeah. And at the end of the day, for a housing crash to happen, there also needs to be a supply and demand, you know? And the demand is so high. We want houses. Supplies. We know everyone our age wants houses. So if there is like a mini correction or interest rates go back down, voom, you're going to get swamped up. So will this be 2008? I no, don't, I don't think so. No, no, definitely. If not. anything, I'm starting to believe more and more the houses are just going to get more expensive. As soon as it drops just a little bit, if people are willing, they're still willing and outbidding and out, you know, paying more than what it is. As soon as interest rates drop even close to five, voom, they're going to be swamped. So prices of houses, are they going to go down? I think they're going to go high, especially because of supply and demand. People are still very employed and a lot of people are desperate to buy a house. Yeah. yeah so like, but this is a really good program. Of course, mm -hmm. we, we want basically for us, Latino, we want to tell you guys about programs like this to help you out. There's so many like Norwalk even has special programs where they help you, right? Yeah. For housing assistance. Yeah. Every, um, this is just one of the many programs. If you just go do a quick little Google search and look up, you know, housing, uh, HUD approved agency near me, HUD approved agency near me, you'll find specific agencies. They're like nonprofits like us, but they only dedicate to helping people buy homes. Um, they connect them to all the grants, the resources, and most of the time it's free or low cost. Like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, we'll connect you to all these resources. We'll help you with your, they'll even review the the loan and tell you what what is good in here, what is bad. They'll, they'll review everything for you. They'll hold your hand. And sometimes they'll charge a fee of like $100, which is worth it for something that's going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. If it's a bad deal, good deal, you just want to make sure. So it's definitely worth it. And they're not out there trying to just sell you stuff. They're mm -hmm. not like for profit. They're non-profit. They're all trying, they're, their goals is helping people. The more people they help and the more success stories, the better they grow, the more reach they have and et cetera. So definitely you know, try it out. Look into the, you know, programs like these, you know, we, like you said, you know, here at the nonprofit, we're just trying to connect you to the programs. And this is one of many programs you can reach out. If you have more questions, you know, let us know. Yeah. My last thing is don't feel like you have to buy a house too. You know, you don't want to buy a house like Joshua was saying in 65 or more of your money goes into just buying the house because one thing is buying the house and paying the house, maintenance, uh, something happens to it. So don't feel the pressure. I know that's like everyone's pressure. I got to get a house. I got to get a house. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a house isn't everything, you know, if it removes or causes too much stress in your life, you know. So think about it. Is like, is it better to just rent right now, save up a little bit more and eventually buy a house? But don't feel that pressure of having to buy a house today. And there's people out there that became wealthy by just investing. They, yeah. have, they own no houses. There, there's a guy who has a Netflix. Yeah. I forgot his name, but I started following him because he's super against people buying houses. He's like, nope, even for me, he's, he's I forgot his name, but he has a Netflix show. And I started listening to him a little bit more. He's like, nope, buying houses doesn't make sense. It's better just take that money and invest it into the stock market because every it's really popular, you know, for real estate agents, people on social media say, I have this many houses, but it's not that easy. You're talking about maintenance, bad tenants, which my dad had to go through that. And I, and I think that's why he doesn't want to do that anymore because it's not all easy. There is some pros and cons. I'm not against owning a home. I want a home because I see the success of my parents. But don't feel that pressure. Yeah, like if you're renting right now and you're saving two, three, four thousand a month, start investing that. Imagine you invest that and like, hey, you know, in 10 years, I know 
house is going to be more expensive, but you'll probably be a millionaire by then. If you sp mm -hmm. invest that much a month instead of paying it on a house, that's another alternative too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't feel the pressure that you have to have a house. Um, yeah, that's that's all we're trying to he be here. Be a bridge of resources for all of you guys. If you have any comments or questions, you know, let us know in the comment section below. If you bought a house, you're looking to buy a house. Um, if you're comfortable enough to share with how much of your house payment makes up your income. Um, <laughs> maybe not everyone's comfortable sharing that, but you know, let us know. Again, our name is, my name is Josh. He's Carlos. We're at Avanza Latino. We're here to help you. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video.